ambulance service. Is the patient breathing? No. They're not breathing? No. Okay. And who was it we're talking about? Um, Lexi, she's three. She's three. Bear with yeah. me. Okay. So she's unconscious and she's not breathing. So help has been arranged. Okay. Mothers. There are loving mothers all over the world, but there are also the total opposite. Mothers that don't care about their children, or even worse, mothers that decide to murder their kids in cold blood. Welcome to Fear Files, where we discuss and dissect the most mysterious, terrifying and mind-bending cases from all over the world. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're a fan of our work. Also, hit that bell icon so you can be notified each time we post a chilling story. Before we start, we would like to say that our thoughts and prayers go towards all the children and the families that fell victims to the deranged deeds of this particular woman. In this episode, Episode, we are going to talk about the gruesome actions of Louise Porton. Louise Porton, a 23-year-old mother from Rugby, United Kingdom, is the subject of this story. Lexi, her first child, was born when Louise was only 18 years old, so it is safe to say that Louise was a teen mom. Yet she had a lot of support from her family, especially from her sister. Louise relocated with her two children, Scarlett and Lexi, to Skida in the United Kingdom. It's been said that she moved away from her hometown all the way to Skida to limit Scarlett's and Lexi's father's access to his children. Both Louise's children had different last names, Scarlett Vaughn and Lexi Draper. Louise claimed that her children had different fathers, but this statement is not actually true, as Lexi and Scarlett are are both Chris Draper's biological children. Being a single mother, Louise was placed in the care of social services. They provided her with a place to stay as well as some sort of financial assistance. On the 29th of January 2018, Louise was transferred into a social service funded hotel in Skido after being in temporary housing. Louise called herself a model, but what she did for a living was nothing like what you might expect when you hear this word. When most of us hear the term model, we think of people who stroll down runways and advertise clothing. Louise Porton, on the other hand, was a sex worker. She would sell photographs of her body to strangers on the internet and offer her services on numerous websites. Louise never got into trouble as a kid and was quite well behaved, except for one time when she was 15 years old. She received a warning from the police for wasting their time and making a false emergency alert. There aren't many specifics about this incident, but it was the closest she'd ever been to committing a crime. Even though Louise was a mother, she was not particularly nurturing. Although her kids were 3 years old and 17 months old at the time, she would sometimes leave them alone at home. On one occasion, she left the house and contacted her sister, telling her that she had left her children home alone and had given them sleeping pills, as if she was proud of doing that. Although she was an irresponsible mom, some people believed Louise was a decent person. Her children were said to always look joyful, healthy and well-dressed. Many people, on the other hand, had a different take on the issue. Chris Draper, Lexi and Scarlett's father, as well as Louise's mother, Sharon Porton, did not approve of the way that she was parenting her kids. Sharon and Chris had both reported her to social services on several occasions for the way that she was doing her motherly duties. Their complaints, however, went unanswered. To put it bluntly, Louise loved going out, having a good time and being a sex worker more than she actually loved her girls. 
On the 2nd of January 2018, Louise dialed 999 for her daughter Lexi because she was apparently having fits. An ambulance was immediately dispatched. But a few seconds later, Louise phoned back to cancel the ambulance, saying that she would take the girl to the hospital instead. And so she did. The two stayed in the hospital for a few hours. The doctors did everything to help Lexi. And the next morning, the little girl was feeling a whole lot better. And with the doctor's permission, she was discharged from the hospital. However, on the 4th of January, 2018, Louise made another night. 999 call. This time, Louise told the operator that her daughter was not breathing. The ambulance arrived quickly and whisked the little girl away. Lexi was resuscitated and her vital signs were back to normal. The physicians wanted to keep her under surveillance, so she would be released from the hospital only after four days. She was diagnosed with a chest infection and the doctor recommended some medication for her. And for the next 10 days, Lexi was in perfect health. The doctors were certain that the medication would help her, but things didn't exactly go as they planned. On the 15th of January, 2018, Louise had to dial 999 once again for her daughter. Louise told the operator on the phone that she had found Lexi in her room and she was not breathing. When the paramedics arrived to Louise's house, they found something rather disturbing. Lexi's body was already cold to the touch. Her lips had become blue and her skin looked muddled. She had obviously been dead for a long time and rigor mortis had started to set in. All of these indicators suggested that Louise had waited until after Lexi had died to call an ambulance and an SUDC was launched. The acronym SUDC stands for Sudden Unexpected Death in Childhood. If a minor under the age of 18 dies suddenly, an SUDC procedure must be initiated. Following that, all institutions engaged in a child's life, such as the school and the social services and so on, interact with one another to ensure that everyone is on the same page. When it comes to a child's death, making sure no information was left out that may affect the outcome is crucial. The results of an autopsy were necessary to continue with the procedure. So Lexi's body was examined but the doctor couldn't find any apparent cause of death. So her body was returned to her mother and the funeral arrangements began. Louise and her sister headed to a funeral parlor, but while they were there, Louise received a FaceTime call. She walked out of the room and she was evidently on the phone with a man. They were laughing and talking in a friendly way. When one of the people in charge of planning the funeral overheard the laughter, instantly felt it wasn't the type of conduct you'd expect from someone who had just lost their child. True, everyone grieves differently, but you wouldn't be in the mood to laugh and grin after you lost your daughter. Two days later, on the 31st of January, a social worker came to see Louise and her 17-month-old daughter, Scarlett. Nothing seemed wrong when she saw the toddler. The baby seemed like she was doing alright, appeared to be quite happy and healthy during her visit. But things weren't as they seemed, just like in the case of Lexi. Because only one day later, so on the 1st of February, Scarlett was pronounced dead. That day, Louise and Scarlett were seen exiting their hotel on the CCTV footage. After they left the building, Louise put her daughter in the back seat of her car and drove to a gas station to fill up. Thank you.
From there, she drove to the parking lot of a shopping mall where she dialed 111, the non-emergency number in the United Kingdom. Louise told the operator that her child wasn't feeling well, but when Louise was asked if her child was awake, Louise said that she was asleep and would not wake up. An ambulance was sent right away and the paramedics were stunned when they arrived. They saw that Scarlett had been dead for some time. Her body was cold and rigor mortis was setting in. So Louise's inability to see that her daughter wasn't just asleep and not waking up and her not calling the actual emergency number when her daughter was obviously dead for a while, plus the apparent similarities and the short time between the two deaths, Louise was on the police's radar for possible murder. This murder investigation, though, took a long time to complete. First of all, they needed the cause of death. Lexi's body had been examined once with no results. The doctor must have missed the signs. So this time around they conducted another autopsy on both girls and it showed evidence of airway blockage. As the police found out more and more about Louise, they started building their case against her. They had a warrant to search her phone and on the night of Scarlett's death, Louis sent several text messages to multiple people saying that she was worried about losing her child. But at the time of those messages, Scarlett was seen alive on CCTV footage. So Louise must have known what she was going to do to that innocent child. Other text messages were also found on her phone. She was texting a male acquaintance of hers, begging for money, saying that she was desperate for money because her daughter was sick. The man knew the kind of person Louise was and refused to give her any money, telling her that she should be in the hospital with her daughter instead of begging for money online. On top of that, Louise attempted to sell all of her children's clothing for 20 pounds on Facebook after the girls died. To further show her lack of concern about her daughters, she also went to the housing office to express her dissatisfaction with the apartment that she had been assigned. The workers there were aware that Louise had recently lost both her children and they were especially kind with her that day. However, they noted that Louise appeared emotionless. She did not look like a mother who had just lost both of her children. After the police thought they had gathered enough evidence against her, she was arrested. During her questioning, Louise denied everything and the police didn't actually have enough to detain her, so she was let free that day. However, the police did not give up and they dug further until they discovered more and more information on Louise. They found out that she had made some weird online searches on the 2nd and on the 4th of January during those two days that her daughter, Lexi, was in the hospital. She looked up topics like why has my three-year-old stopped breathing and how long after drowning can someone be resuscitated. These were weird searches especially for a mother whose daughter was in the hospital. It was clear that she was planning something and collecting as much information as she could so that her plan would succeed. Then she did something truly disturbing that made our stomach turn. While at the hospital for the second time when Lexi was sick, Louise went to the restroom where she took topless pictures of herself and she sent them to not one, 
not two but multiple men, enticing them to meet up later, where her one goal was to offer her sexual services in exchange for money. While there, she also befriended another man, and then she also swept numbers with the security guard. She was offering her services to him too, and she seemed interested, so much so that they exchanged 87 messages. All of this happened while Lexi was fighting for her life. After Luis left the hospital with Lexi, she sent text messages to a number of people claiming that the doctor told her that Lexi wouldn't make it, despite the fact that the girl was released from hospital after she recovered. Another clean sign of what she had in mind for that poor little girl. Following the discovery of this evidence, the authorities determined that Louise had smothered her two daughters to death in cold blood without even feeling an ounce of remorse. The post-mortem examination also revealed that Scarlett had bruises on her neck, suggesting that Louise had previously attempted to strangle her. Blood was also discovered on one of their pillows, leading investigators to believe that this was used to suffocate Scarlett. Louise was arrested on the 20th of January, 2019. She was charged with the murder of her two children, and she filed a not guilty plea on the 4th of March, 2019. Now, tell us this, how can a woman with so much evidence against her say that she is not guilty? The tragic reality about what Louise had done to her own children was revealed on court. But of course, Louise had something to say about that so that the jury would have to think twice before convicting her. She admitted that she had difficulty expressing her feelings and forming meaningful relationships with other people, even if those other people were her own two daughters. Her hopes were to make people think that she had some sort of mental disorder that wouldn't let her feel emotions and form attachments. Louise had to undergo a psychological examination to determine whether or not she had a mental illness. This would have been her only way out of jail for murdering her two daughters. Fortunately, that wasn't the case. She was deemed sane and fit to stand trial, but Louise maintained her innocence. She continued to lie in hopes that something would change. She claimed that the idea of murdering her girls had never occurred to her. She did mention at one time that motherhood wasn't easy for her. This made the jury think that she admitted to her crimes in an indirect way. All the evidence against her, the text messages, the CCTV footage, her behavior pointed into the direction that the murders were premeditated, though the judge was hesitant. He couldn't say without a doubt that she planned the killings in advance, or that they were a spontaneous decision. The age of Louise was also taken into account. She was 22 years old at the time of the murders, and 23 years old when she was arrested and sent to court. As a result, the judge concluded that Louise's age and immaturity influenced her decision-making abilities. After much deliberation, Louise Porton was charged with the murders of her two daughters, Lexi Draper and Scarlett Vaughn. She was sentenced to prison for a minimum of 32 years, with her 188 days in custody taken into consideration. Louise apparently showed no emotion at all when she heard her sentence. Had social services listened to Chris Draper, the father, the girls may still be alive today. When Louise's mother, Sharon, found out what her daughter had done, she disowned her and severed all ties with her. Sadly, Sharon fell into a deep depression after losing her two granddaughters. And if that wasn't terrible enough, Sharon was found dead in her house on the 4th of February, 2020. She committed suicide at the age of 48 because she was haunted by the crimes of her daughter. 
Now, this is a mother who doesn't deserve anything on Mother's Day. The actions of this deranged woman, who didn't even have a mental disorder to begin with, not only destroyed the lives of two beautiful girls, who had their entire future ahead of them, but also scarred their father and led to her own mother's suicide. And the fact that Louise didn't even seem to care or feel remorse about what she did makes things even worse. We hope you liked listening to this case about a mom who you wouldn't want to tuck you in at night. As always, it was an honor to present to you another case that we know give you goosebumps. Be sure to give us your take on it in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and click that subscribe button so you'll be part of our fast-growing community. And until next time, stay safe and keep your eyes peeled. You never know what's lurking in the shadows.